Hey everyone and welcome to day two of the Get Set Parent Children's Literature, Art and Music Festival in association with Vishwarang. This is the first ever edition of this festival and this is going to be the coolest, funnest, most exciting online event this lockdown. Yesterday, we had an amazing time meeting the one and only amazing author, Mr. Ruskin Bond. And we also witnessed an amazing puppet show by the US Puppet Art Theatre. Today, we're going to be doing something very different. But before that, you know what to do. Press the bell icon that you see below to subscribe to my channel. Uh, over the next seven days, we're going to be doing amazing workshops, art appreciation sessions, storytelling sessions, and so much more. And you don't want to miss out. Also follow me on Instagram and Facebook to make sure that you're tuned in with everything that I post. <laughs> Today we're going to attend a French art appreciation workshop. Have you heard of Claude Monet? He was the initiator and advocate of the impressionist movement in the art world, right? So it essentially captured uh, the effect of light and the passing of seasons. And that's how, you know, he kind of created this entire style of painting. Today, to tell us more about this amazing style and to take you through an entire painting which you can sit right at home in the comfort of your home and paint with us, we are very happy to welcome on to Get Set Parent with Pallavi, uh, Miss Akanksha Nimani of Artlinks. She's an artist, an avid art enthusiast and has got a world of accolades behind her in the, um, you know, art and painting arena. To tell us more about, um, you know, the impressionist style of painting and the Claude Monet style of painting, it's my uh, immense joy to welcome Ms. Akanksha Nimani from Artlinks. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Pallavi, for the introduction and inviting me for the Children's Literature, Art and Music uh, Festival. I am very happy to be a part of this initiative. And uh, today's workshop is going to be on a very, very famous French artist called Claude Monet. So let's get started. So uh, this uh, art appreciation workshop is for all you children who love art, and I hope you enjoy this lovely, lovely session that we have planned for you. Let's start with uh, talking a little bit about the artist and his style and technique and his work, following which we will go on to actually create one of his pieces and uh, be inspired by his life and technique. So, Claude Monet was a very famous artist. He was a French artist. He was born in Paris on 14th November, 1840. So 14th November is actually Children's Day. And uh, he loved to draw and paint as a child. It was one of his most favorite things he did as a hobby. In fact, he loved to draw caricatures of people and he would sell them to make his extra pocket money. He really, really loved nature. He loved nature because to him, it was always changing and it was never the same. He loved the way, you know, especially during different seasons, during different weather, the surroundings around him always kept changing. You know, and he loved to paint that and that always kept him very, very interested. He especially loved his very famous water lily garden. So you can see here, this is a picture of his garden. This is a painting that he painted himself. So what he did was when he grew a little bit older, he rented a small house in uh, Giverny, which was a small town outside of the city of Paris. It was a small town. It was called Giverny. 
and he rented a small house there and he spent the next 30 years of his life painting in that house. He also built the entire garden in that house by himself. He actually constructed this bridge that you can see here, the Japanese bridge. He was inspired by Japanese bridges and he constructed it himself. He also planted all the flowers and plants and fruits on his own in his garden. He planted it himself. He loved nature that much. And he loved to paint that garden during different times of the day, during different seasons of the year, because it always looked unique to him. It always kept changing. So, for example, he painted this picture of his garden probably sometime around, I would say, sunset, when the sun is probably setting. And you can see that through his colors that he's used. He's used warmer, darker colors. And I probably think around the season of autumn because of the way he's used yellows and oranges and all the colors that we associate with the season autumn. He then painted this picture, I would think probably in the season of spring. And why I say spring is because of the colors of the flowers on in the pond. They are pinks, they are purples, they are all the bright colors. And he probably painted it at a very sunny time during the day. So, you know, during peak afternoon, because you can see how the trees are all sort of, you know, shining really, really bright. This is another picture of his garden. So this is a sort of a close-up version of his painting. It's called the water lilies. So he's just here sort of focused on the water lilies. He's zoomed into the lilies and he's tried to capture, you know, the lilies floating in the pond. His style of painting now was called Impressionism. Impressionism was his style of painting and that's what he became very, very famous for eventually. And the reason why it was called Impressionism is because he used very, very soft strokes, short strokes. So if you see here in this picture, if you look very closely, the strokes are very short and quick, right? So now the reason why he used to paint very quickly is because he would always paint outdoors. And when you are painting outdoors, you have to be very quick because weather conditions keep changing very frequently. So in order to capture something that you see, you need to paint it very quickly before the light and shadow changes before, you know, sometimes there would be a burst of rain. Sometimes the light would change. The sun would, you know, the sunlight direction would change. So he had to adapt to those conditions while painting outside. And therefore he painted very, very quickly. And you can see that through his short strokes and quick strokes. And in that process, he never really could capture all the details. He was never interested in capturing the details of the flower or the minute details. He just wanted to capture that particular mood of that time, of that time of day or the season of the year, of that particular moment. He wanted to capture that. And that is why his style of painting was called Impressionism because to lots of people, his paintings looked like impressions. They looked like very quick, you know, impressions of the real scenery. And that's what he actually intended to do. He wanted to capture a particular moment in time, you know, of his garden. So he's created almost 300 paintings of his water lilies. And over his lifetime of, you know, 80 years and uh, the last 30 years of his life, uh, life is where he lived in this uh, house in Giverny where he created this garden 
and uh, spent most of his time painting. Okay, so now we'll go on to actually creating one of his uh, pictures using his technique of impressionism. We're going to create our version of the very, very famous water lily garden. We're going to be inspired by this picture, which is the picture of his garden with his bridge. And we're going to be creating our version of his water lily garden. We'll be using only our fingers, so no paint brushes. We're going to be creating our impressions. We're going to use our finger impressions to create this piece of art. So let's get started. You could take a paper or you could take a canvas. It's totally up to you. And we have some acrylic colors here. So it could be acrylic colors, poster colors, whatever you are comfortable with. And firstly, we'll start off with drawing the outline of the bridge. So if you can see here, we're just going to make a rough outline of where the bridge will be. This is just to give you an indication. It's a simple bridge. So the parts above the bridge is where we'll do the trees and the parts below the bridge we'll do the water and the pond with the lilies, right? So let's get started. For the trees, I'm going to show you two ways how we can do the trees. So we'll take a dark green, we'll take a light green, and we could also use some yellow, okay? So what we do is, we have the green, we dip our fingers in the dark green, and what we simply have to do is short strokes. So if you can see here, you will flip your finger up to down, up to down, okay? It's just flicking of the finger from up to down. You don't have to drag your fingers, you just have to flick them like this, okay? And then we add a little bit of light green as well. And we create the shading. You just keep flicking your fingers. Take dark green. So these are all the trees. You will also continue all the way down till the bridge. Okay, so the you'll see the faint pencil line of the bridge, that's fine. That's just to give you an indication. We'll go over it once we've finished doing the trees. So you go all the way down till the till the bridge finishes, okay? Just flicking off the fingers. And how will you do the strokes? It will be up to down, up to down. Because the trees are falling down. So the strokes will be up to down. Okay. 
So now another way to do the trees is we will do the bushy trees. So that's just dabbing your fingers. It's simply dabbing your fingers. It's your pointer finger that we are using, your index finger. And we are just dabbing. Okay. Here we were flicking. Now we are dabbing. This is another way to create bushy trees. Again, you go all the way down till the line of the bridge. You are just using your pointer finger for this one. This completes our tree section. Now we move on to doing the pond. We move on to doing the, the lake, okay, with the water and the lilies. So you can just wipe your pointer finger. So for this we take some dark blue and we take some light blue, okay? And how does the water flow in a pond or a lake? It's very still, correct? There are no waves. The water is still and calm and flat. So your strokes now will be horizontal. So you again take your pointer finger. Take some blue paint and your strokes now for the water will be horizontal from left to right or right to left. For the trees we did up to down, we did up to down. For the water we are doing left to right. You also take some light blue and you create the shading. So again, you're flicking your finger, short strokes. Left to right. It's, this is all the water in the lake or the pond. You continue and we'll complete all of this. Again, remember we are doing left to right or right to left, not up to down. We are doing this, okay? Because the water in the lake is flat. It is still, it is calm. So here I have my water completed, my trees are completed. 
And now I'm going to go on to do the bridge. Once the bridge is done, we'll do the lilies in the end. So now for the bridge, you could take a brown or any color you like to do for the bridge. I'm taking a brown. I dip my pointer finger in a little bit of brown. And from your sheet, you'll be able to see the rough outline of the bridge we made. So we are simply going to go over it. Okay. We're just going to go over the lines that we made in the beginning. So there was one line down. There was one line up. It's like you're using a paintbrush, but in this case, we're just using our fingers. Then there was a line in the middle, a thin line in the middle. That becomes your bridge. Make sure your lines are straight. This becomes your bridge. And now we move on to doing the lilies, the water lilies, which will be in the pond here. And now we move on to doing the final part of our picture, which is the lilies. For that, we can take dark pink and some light pink. So what we do is we take some dark pink and some light pink together and here we have to do something very simple. Okay. It's you know how you make the letter C? It's a C, right? So here what we do is we make one small C and then we make another small C. Got it? That becomes your lily. So we make all the lilies first and then we can make the green pads for the lilies afterwards. So it's one small C and another small C. One small C and another small C. You could make how many ever lilies you like. Make some small, some big. It's totally up to you. Correct, these become your lilies. Now we take the green, light green and dark green for the lily pads. Correct, the base of the lily, the lily pad. 
So you take some dark green and light green and below the lily you just make a semicircle. It's you just have to make a semicircle below the lily. Just like this, just covering. You can see here. Just making the base for the lilies. Take some light green as well. And our picture is now ready. I'll share with you how the final picture looks. This is what it looks like. This is our version of the very famous water lily garden so we're going to be doing i'll be showing you one more artwork based on claude monet's uh, style of impression painting and uh, this one we're going to be doing uh, as an autumn season painting so pictures that uh, claude monet painted in the season of autumn so autumn, as we know, uh, you know, is associated with colors such as red, oranges, yellows, browns, the more warmer colors. So we're going to be using these colors to create a water lily garden, his Claude Monet's garden, uh, inspired by the season of autumn. So the previous one we did was based on the season of spring where we used lots of bright colors. This one we'll be using, as I said, oranges, reds, yellows, browns to create an autumn painting inspired by Claude Monet's Water Lily Garden. So let's get started. So this time I'm going to, I'll show you how we're going to be doing it. You can see so I'm going to make the bridge I'm going to make the bridge half my bridge And then I'm going to just create a rough outline. For a path. So this is the path. Let's extend the bridge. So we'll take the bridge all the way actually. And this is a path leading up to the bridge. And then here we're going to have lots of bushy plants. Plants along here. This is the path. We're going to be doing the trees here. And here we will be painting the lilies in the pond. This is just to give you a rough idea of the composition. So let's get started. We'll start with the trees. 
as per the first picture we use dark green and with the same technique dark green and light green I'm going to flick my finger up and down. So we use dark green and light green. We can also use a little bit of brown in the middle to create a shading and give it a darker tone. And we continue all the way down till the bridge like in the first picture and then we'll paint over the bridge later once we are done with the trees. You continue doing shading using light green, dark green and a little bit of brown all the way down till the bridge. You have to flick your finger up and down. Continue to do this. You need to keep flicking your fingers up and down. Don't drag your fingers. So 
we are done with the tree uh, the tree part and now we will do the pathway okay now for the pathway i'm going to take some red and brown red and brown and create a path so for the path I'm just going to drag my fingers from left to right. It's, it's a path in the garden, right? A muddy path. I'm going to take some brown. And create this path. You see how it is going narrow and then broad and then again narrow. That is the path. Then we move on to doing the tree, the plants here in the garden. So again for the plants, let's use green, light green, dark green and for the plants now they are upright so we're going to make strokes that are upright like this up to down This is the, the path and the plants. Now the plants on the other side. Again we take dark green, light green. We have plants here as well. Plants along the footpath. I'm also going to introduce some orange. To merge some orange. These are all along the path you can also make them bushy
take some light green. This becomes your I'm just going to merge this becomes your path. And then we move on. I'm also going to add some orange dots here for the flowers on the plants because we are painting an autumn scene. So I'm going to add some orange dots everywhere then we move on to doing the water in the pond so for the water as usual we have blue strokes Light blue and dark blue as we did in the earlier picture. Just merge it along the edges Use light blue and dark blue to create the shading. This becomes your pond. Now let's move on to doing the bridge. So I'm going to take brown for the bridge and make my outline.
fill it this is my outline for the bridge probably use some red to make it darker I'm just using, adding some highlights. In the form of red to the bridge. And then just with red, make a thin line to divide the bridge make the middle line of the bridge very thin line that becomes my bridge and then I have my path I have my path here. And then we'll use some yellows and oranges to add more flowers. Let's use some yellow also to add some more flowers here. And the lilies, we can do some yellow and brown, yellow, orange and brown. We can make some flowers in the water as well using yellow, orange and brown which are autumn colors. I'm just making small lilies like this as we made in the previous picture. Also adding some red. And making the pad of the lily with green. It's the same technique as the first painting, just using different colors. Using dark green to make the pad of the lily. And this is the final painting. This is how an autumn garden inspired by Claude Monet looks. You can see here we made a garden with a pathway lined with flowers and some lilies in the water. have a look again to see the final picture.
this is the final picture. Wow, that was so cool, Akanksha. Thank you so much. And I'm sure all our lovely children had a blast, you know, painting along with you and learning so much about the Claude Monet style of painting and the Impressionist art. Uh, thanks again. And kids, don't go anywhere. We're going to join you right back with an amazing, exciting storytelling session and an interaction with another very, very famous writer. So don't go anywhere and come back soon. And we're going to start the next session. <laughs>